Hey there, good evening. Nice to see you. Welcome to the Bronx Buzz. This is BronxNet's program where we talk to reporters and editors and writers and journalists and people who are covering uh, the borough of the Bronx. We also have something kind of special for you in our second segment. We're going to go to City Island for something special. But right now, let's start with the digital editor of the Bronx Times. It is Camille Otello. We have met Camille before. Nice to have you on the program. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Um, so just uh, before we get into, um, you know, things like the King of the Drama and some other stuff, um, let's uh, ask you, who, who are you? <laughs> where, <laughs> where, where are you from? And, um, uh, you know, a little bit about your background so people, when they read your stuff, your wonderful work in the Bronx Times, they know who you are. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, my name is Camille. I'm the digital editor of the Bronx Times, like you mentioned. Uh, I grew up in a small town in Idaho, just about two hours north of Boise. Um, and then I went to school for journalism near Portland, Oregon in McMinnville. Um, and then after school, I have to just interject people who read your work and it's really, it's, it's grassroots and it's down to earth will say, wait a minute, she comes from there. If you want yeah. to click on the map, two places that have nothing to do with each other, you pick the dogs <laughs> and Boise, I know. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I couldn't resist. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I get that all the time. It's super interesting. Um, yeah, like I said, so I'm from the West. And then after I graduated from college, uh, that was kind of like right at the start of the pandemic. And I wasn't sure what to do. I had a journalism degree, but not a lot of places were hiring. And um, I had never been to Alaska before. And I moved to Alaska sort, uh -huh. of, sort of for no reason. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so talk about different ends of the country, right? Um, and so that's, uh, I started reporting actually in Alaska at a daily newspaper in a small town there. Well, how did, how did you end up here? Not, not that we're not thrilled to have you because as you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, I actually have a, a cousin who I'm really close with who went to NYU. And so he's been here for about five years now and it just sort of lined up. I was, I was ready to leave Alaska, although I loved it very much. Um, and I just thought, Hey, you know, why don't I try New York city? So it was kind of another thing that I, that I did. Um, and then I was able to yeah. get a reporting uh -huh. job here. How long ago was that? That was a year ago now. A year ago. Well, mm -hmm. I, mean, I feel like I've read so much of your material that I, it would be longer than that. So w one of the things that I love, and of course, we're Bronx centered and we spend a lot of time talking about the Bronx. And we spend a lot of time talking about the Bronx. Um, it's always interesting that somebody from the outside gives their impression. What do mm -hmm. you think? What's it been like? Um, what, what inspires you? What annoys you? <laughs> <Which is funny. laughs> Um, but um, what's it been like for a, a young woman from the West to be here and covering the Bronx? Yeah, you know, it's so different. New York City, there's there's really nothing like it. I had been here just, you know, for a couple days here and there traveling or visiting, um, you know, my cousin or going to his graduation. I came here last summer before I moved as well. Um, and, you know, the West is so big. It's so expansive. It's so new. But out here, the East Coast is so different. The architecture is beautiful. It's old. Um, the culture on the West is a little bit more relaxed and laid back out here. You know, everybody's go, go, go all the time. Um, we, we live on top of each other, literally. Yeah, literally. <laughs> um, so it's been it's been a great experience. I love it here. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, uh, favorite stories. I mean, we're going to talk about the Kings Ridge Armory, but just give me a sense of something you covered that you said, wow, this is pretty cool. This is yeah. really interesting. Yeah, um, reporting in the Bronx has been great. I think in a lot of ways, I know that, you know, my my editor, Christian Falcone, and a lot of my colleagues and, you know, former colleagues, we talk a lot about how the Bronx is sort of, um, and, you, and you've spoken about this as well, about how the borough is a little bit um, underrepresented in media. And so I think that we really try to cover, you know, a lot of nuances um, of the borough, not just crime, and not just some of those stories that make you know, headlines in daily publications or even national publications. Um, and one of the stories that I found um, that was just very fulfilling for me to be able to write, I covered uh, two sports clubs. One was in East New York, Brooklyn, and one was in the Belmont section of the Bronx. Um, these two clubs, along with a couple others, I didn't have time to spotlight all of them, unfortunately. They received a grant from Nike last year that was specifically targeting young girls in sport. And so um, I got to go and shadow a couple practices, 
take my own photos, um, interview some of the the little girls, their parents, the coaches, and that it's, was a really fulfilling me, one. To me, that's that's where real life in the book is. is that mm -hmm. We do have uh, opportunities, and um, you know, you said I've talked about being underrepresented. To me, I feel like it's undiscovered territory. I mean, nobody knows we're here. <laughs> so, totally. It's, it's a little weird. Anyway, let's mm -hmm. talk about um, the Kingsbridge Armory, which has been a center of focus, of course, for um, <laughs> generations, in essence. Mm -hmm. um, and now um, Governor Hochul and uh, Mayor Adams, who wrote about this, uh, announced $200 million in grants. Why don't you uh, talk about, you were at that uh, press conference and talk about what it was like and or what, or what your um, thoughts are about it. Yeah, um, you know, I, like I said, I've only lived here for a year, but it seems like the Kingsbridge Armory has, you know, long been a source of a lot of intrigue. Um, it was originally opened in 1917 as a military facility and had been used, you know, for a while after that. It was actually listed um, later on a National Registry of Historical Places in the early 80s. Yeah. But since 1996, um, it's been mostly vacant. And so different community groups and elected officials, as we all know, have, you know, announced ambitious plans for redevelopment, which includes um, a lot that have failed, um, like a shopping mall there. The one of the bigger ones recently was, um, I think, I think it might have been one yeah, of the I'm, biggest. Yeah. yeah, the Kingsbridge National Ice Center. Yes, yes, the Ice Center. Um, and so a lot of people, you know, after these couple of proposals have failed, have been wondering what's going to become of this huge space because it you know it's 11 stories tall and it's about three football fields deep it's Just massive yeah. right um and so yeah so uh last week when governor hochel and new york city mayor eric adams said they they basically said they really really want to get um some funding so something can actually become of this space um and so they you know, each administration committed a hundred million dollars uh, in grants. Well, that's pretty significant, I, I would think. Um, the the mm -hmm. question that I've heard from the community, now Northwest Bronx Community and Clergy Coalition had gotten community people, it's our armory and all that, and they, they want real input. Um, so far, uh, there's not a mention of, uh, you know, community ownership, union jobs, uh, local hire, shared wealth, which is all the things that people say. We'll see, I suppose, um, how this plays out. We'll yeah, know. actually, at the at the press conference, Governor Hochul did mention that she wants, um, you know, part of the grant funding, at least from her administration and other community leaders have spoken about it before that they really want to focus on hiring local people who live in the Bronx to, to fill these jobs right exactly. Um, and so I think, and the local officials that I spoke to as well emphasized that point. Um, I spoke to Bronx Community Board 7 District Manager uh, Carla Cabrera Carrera mm -hmm. and also State Senator Gustavo Rivera. And they kind of both said that the um, that they're more confident now than ever that something can actually right. become of the redevelopment because they are grants and because, um, you know, the city won't have to pay back any of that money. Right. And also, uh, I think because the community is so energized about it. Uh, mm -hmm. One other thing before we um, run out of time that you wrote about, um, you uh, this was very interesting to me. You wrote a story about, um, uh, and this was a little while back, about the, the, we had a three-day heat spell, although this three days certainly, <laughs> yesterday it certainly feel like, it felt like it was pretty hot. Um, right. <laughs> um, but it said that Bronxites were still some of the most vulnerable. Why do you think we would be uh, more vulnerable than other communities in New York City, whether it be Brooklyn or Queens or Watson? Yeah, that was an interesting one, too. Um, I sort of had the idea because, as we all know, a couple of weeks ago, the National Weather Service announced a, an excessive heat advisory for New York City um, with temperatures, you know, ranging in the high 90s, but could feel like, you know, up to 108 degrees. Um, and I found uh, looking through the heat vulnerability index um, that the Bronx has the most neighborhoods in the city that are deemed highest risk on a scale of one to five at 22 neighborhoods. And so that's compared to 11 in Brooklyn, seven in Queens, three in Manhattan and zero on Staten Island. Um, no, so is, this, is this because of um, various health uh, 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 in indicators or um, a poverty I'm guessing would be an mm -hmm. aspect of it? Um, it certainly is um, concrete around here and that reflects heat pretty much. Right. Right. Yeah. There. So there are five main um, 
factors that the city environment uh, and health and data portal emphasize kind of make a neighborhood higher risk versus lower risk. Um, you know, and those include income level, those include um, access to air conditioning, of course, Ooh, canopy cover, canopy cover, green space. Um, and um, that, that, excuse me, that, that was a, a phrase I had never really heard before, which was in your article, and that was the idea of canopy cover. So that's interesting. Mm -hmm. That would that would reflect places uh, or maybe even uh, awnings on stores, I'm guessing, or, you know, other places where you could go and just get some shape. <laughs> yeah, I think it's mostly uh, I think it's mostly referencing, you know, green space and different trees, not just in parks, but in in, you know, sidewalks and neighborhoods as well. Um, but the city environment and health and data portal also emphasizes that neighborhoods most at, at risk uh, is quote, rooted in past and present racism. And, you know, as we know, the Bronx is a borough full of uh, diverse cultures and it has one of the highest populations of black and brown people as well. So that, that's so, a factor. You know, and, and I, yeah, listen, we could break this down and drive ourselves crazy over it. Just before we run out of time, sneak preview, what are you working on? <laughs> Where, what um, are you next? Yeah. Um, you know, I'm excited to be covering a lot of different things. We kind of all do a lot of different beat coverage at the Bronx Times. Um, yeah, right now I think we're going to be prepping for uh, election season coming up here oh, in September, yeah. October, November. Yeah. Um, hopefully get a few more sports stories in there by the end of the summer. That would be one of my goals as well. Is, is that now you mentioned that when I asked you about um, favorite stories, that was what you went to right away. Um, you like covering sports? Uh, I, mean, I do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can go out there at Yankee Stadium and do that, but it, it's pretty exciting when you see kids and you know high schools and even younger too, right? That's yeah, pretty, absolutely. Cool. Yeah, it's been it's been really fun to cover sports. I I used to cover in Alaska, and um, so whenever I get a sports story here, I kind of I jump on it. I think there are so many different angles. You know, sports means so much to a lot of people. Yeah. So it's definitely one of my favorite beats. I, w I was going to say, um, it's one thing to do the score and the batting averages and all that and, you know, do like a regular sports story, but it's much more, much more inspirational to do it uh, about, about kids who are coming from families and uh, achieved for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. Listen, um, uh, Camille Botello, uh, a digital editor of the Bronx Times, uh, I hope you love working and covering us here because we need you and you're <laughs> good reporter and we want you to keep writing uh, great stuff uh, for us and about us and find out interesting stuff okay well we, thanks very much you promise me but that's what i'm, I'm putting up. <laughs> right <laughs> thank you uh, gary <laughs> listen and send our uh, the bronx nets regards to all our friends over there at schnips and uh, the bronx times and we'll see you around town thank you so much absolutely thank you okay we're going to take a short break and uh, as i mentioned we're going to go and go to the movies on City Island. Don't go away.